Hello and welcome back to the Happy Hippie Podcast. I am your host, Amanda McCormack. I am a registered yoga teacher, a certified personal trainer, a certified nutrition coach, and a Girls Gone Strong women's training specialist. On this podcast, we explore all the areas in life that contribute to bringing us greater happiness. Join me each week as we take deep dives into different wellness topics, methods, and products, and we even talk to experts in the field to discover what you can bring into your life to feel better mentally, physically, and spiritually. Get ready as the Happy Hippie Podcast guides you towards living your best life. Hey, welcome back everybody. This week we are diving into a totally new topic and I also have a new kind of format that I'm doing. I mentioned it in our last episode, but basically what we're going to be doing each week is I'll be dropping a podcast episode and then I'll be dropping a few days later a meditation that kind of correlates to the theme of the podcast episode. So podcast episodes will drop on Monday. And then on Thursdays, I will drop a meditation. So during the week, you can still take into practice what we spoke about in the episode. So this week, I had a few topics I wanted to talk about. And I put a poll up on my Instagram not to plug myself, but happy holistic hippie. And I got an overwhelming response for this topic, which I I'm excited because I did want to talk about this one pretty soon. It was really easy for me to do this episode because I feel like it's really close to my heart at the moment. But this week's topic is confidence. So we will have a meditation for the solar plexus, which is all about confidence um, coming out on Thursday to correlate with this episode. So I will post on my Instagram when that is live. But in this episode, we are going to talk about seven different ways that you can improve your confidence for life. So they're actionable steps. I give tons of examples and I also give resources. So I'm not just talking ideas to you. You actually have ways that you can take steps to achieving this and making it something that's in your life. This episode was basically inspired by just what I've been seeing right now in the season that we're in. So I'm recording this episode in July and As a woman, every single year, they always push summer bodies, quote unquote, and all that jazz, you know, summer marketing and these mindsets that have been, there's a cycle, it comes around every year, but these mindsets that have pretty much been ingrained in us that we're supposed to look a certain way, feel a certain way, behave a certain way as women for the summertime has been going on forever. And I am also a personal trainer. I have clients. So my clients express some of these things to me that they hear and they see and It's been in my head recently, so I decided to make an episode not really going into just what the beauty standards are and the way that advertising and societal pressures um, basically place this on women to conform to a certain standard of beauty for the summer months and how marketing and advertising like really push it. So I wanted to do more about how to overcome that, how to get through that instead of focusing on it. So we're not going to go too much into body image or anything like that in this episode at all. So don't worry. But it is a catalyst for me making this episode. There's a lot of shame basically placed on women, um, especially since we've been kids. I've been hearing this stuff since I was literally a child. You see the commercials on TV. We put a pressure on ourselves to look a certain way, behave a certain way or expect certain things. And it's amplified during the summer. Again, we have to remember that it's literally all marketing. Everything that all of this stuff, all the unrealistic, unhealthy standards for women to basically like achieve a perfect bikini body or like be perceived as like tall tan tone, that type stuff. And all those buzzwords you hear like summer diet or like bikini abs, all those things. They're literally just used for hype for campaigns and ultimately just to make money. Like that's what it comes down to. And It sucks because it's been pushed in our heads for years and years and years. And then other women also pick up on it. So I've heard these things reiterated to me by my own mom, but I know it's not her doing it like out of evil or spite. It's because that's what her mom told to her and other people told to her as a kid, you know, like everything that's ingrained in people's minds is because of their subconscious. And when you're a kid, you pick up on what you hear. And when you grow up, especially being a female, like as a literal child, (laughs) you're exposed to this and it sticks with you. So it's reinforced constantly. So I understand that you can hear these messages all the time. And again, you have to just step back and remind yourself it's all because of money. (laughs) All of these ideas are so that gyms and beauty companies, they can sell you certain things. You'll notice the campaigns for, I'm trying to think like if you just go on Sephora's website right now, there will be tons of like Sol de Janeiro products because their products promote being tanned and having smooth skin because you're showing a lot of skin in the summer, quote unquote. And that's what they're trying to promote. And then, you know, you go on a different website and they're promoting different types of bikinis and all that jazz. And it's just to make money. Everything they do, they try to push a beauty standard on you so that they can make money. 
And when you try to remind yourself of that, it makes hearing these images and these messages a lot easier. But I just want you to also remember that you literally have the power. Like whenever these messages come up or whenever you hear people talking about it in conversations, remember that you don't have to drive yourself insane over it, that you can choose where you want to put your energy. So you can choose to like how you view yourself for the summer you can choose if you want to put your energy into nitpicking yourself it takes time everything i'm saying isn't just like a quick fix where i'm like obviously just be happy (laughs) then i wouldn't even have a podcast where i'd have to go into these topics you know so just remember these things for right now because the first thing you can have to gain progress in any area is having an awareness so again having awareness that all of those messages are just used to make money basically and then having an awareness that you can choose where you want to put your energy you can put your energy into really focusing on your body image and what's wrong and all those things or you can put your energy this summer into enjoying your habits the habits that you're taking the actionable steps that you're taking to make differences or enjoying your trips or enjoying the fun enjoying changing the narrative in your mindset I'm bringing this up because I went through all of this for the longest time and I mean every now and then my foot kind of slides back into that doubt area but I'm able to pull myself out using pretty much the things I've learned and the tools that I've learned over the years that I'm going to share with you in this episode again I always like to reference some of person like I'm a soul in progress like I'm always growing I'm always learning so like I'm not perfect I'm not like immune to having bad image days and things like that but it really does come down to mindset and practicing these things so it doesn't happen overnight but when you change your mindset and you start to learn how to view yourself and what to prioritize and focusing on just self-development in general it trickles over into so many different areas in your life which we will discuss in a little bit as well but basically these mindset tips that I'm going to share with you there's also actions in there too besides just mindset stuff but they really have changed my life Um, not just for summer confidence but confidence in general. They al- implementing these things pretty much allowed me to blossom into the most authentic version of myself that I can be at the moment and just thoroughly enjoy things. You know, I spent so long not enjoying anything because I was so focused on what I didn't like in life all the time, constantly, whether it be my body image or where I am in life or money or school or people or boys, anything. I was so focused on the lack and the negative that when I started to change and focus on myself in general just appreciating where I am right now it's not wrong to have goals and want to strive for something and you can totally do both but you have to have an appreciation of where you are otherwise you're literally living in the lack like you're living in what you don't have and then that just carries over for life and (laughs) then you won't be happy that's that's what it comes down to so taking these tips into this area of confidence we're going to talk a little bit about that so let's get into the tips I have seven tips and then again I will be posting a meditation this week that aligns with this topic so stay tuned for that but let's get into the juicy tidbits the actionable steps that we can take together So my first bit of advice to improve your confidence, because again, it is a mindset. We can go into steps, but the first thing you have to do is kind of switch the way you look at situations. So switch the focus on focusing what you can add into your life instead of what you can take away. So especially for summer, kind of I'm going to tie that in a little bit as we go through this episode, but it's been pushed to us to really focus on quick fixes or diets or, all right, I want to lose weight. I'm going to restrict like restricting has been the number one thing that's pushed for getting a goal. If you want something, you have to suffer. That ideal has been pushed around forever. So a lot of the times when it comes to body image goals or anything like that, we want to restrict. That's our biggest thing. We're like, okay, so I'll just cut out this and this and I'll have my goal and I'll be unhappy during that time. That's not the reality of it. If you can switch and focus on what you can add onto your life instead of taking away, same thing. Some people want to focus on money management and they'll be like, well, I'm just not going to spend anything. I'm not going to go out. I'm not going to enjoy anything ever. Doing that black and white thinking where you're restricting and just taking away something. I see it all the time. It's hard to, I I see it all the time and I speak to people about it and sometimes it won't click with people and that's something in life I always have to remember is like if people aren't ready to hear it they're not going to hear it that could be any bit of advice if somebody's not there to listen they're not going to take it into account and change with it just looking at this topic from the lens of health any health related goal it could be physical it could be mental whatever but looking at your health and looking at your goals and almost going into your intention so Is this goal coming from a place of wanting to better yourself or have love for your body or is it coming from a place of dislike and hate? Usually when things come from the dislike and hate 
lens, you're going to want to restrict and take away. You feel almost unworthy. You have to restrict yourself. You have to cut off these things. But when you're looking at your health goals from a place that you want to better your body and love your body or take care of your body in this way, what can you add in to create that change? So in terms of summer, like if you want to think about it, what can you do this summer to improve your health. Well, maybe you can start to make more refreshing beverages using like summer ingredients. You know what I'm saying? So like focusing on hydration, making little mocktails or making like adrenal cocktails, little things like that. None of those have alcohol in it. If you're not familiar with the names, like adrenal cocktails is basically like drinking coconut water, (laughs) electrolytes, things like that, that you can focus on adding in. Maybe if it's your summer goal, you're trying to eat more vegetables. Focus on adding them in instead of restricting away the desserts that you enjoy. If you enjoy eating key lime pie on vacation, still eat that, but focus on maybe adding in some more salads because it's actually easier to do that in the summer because there's more flavors and fruits and things in um, abundance at the time. You can focus on, hey, it's summertime. Maybe I can experience more hikes or more trails or I can go swimming or just think about maybe at the moment what the beauty of summer can do and add to your health. It's just all about focusing on what you can add. What can you do right now to bring something into your life? This will in turn increase your confidence because now you're coming from a state of I have what I need here to help me out instead of feeling that energy of lack. So it puts your mindset into the state where you can actually get closer to your goals, closer to feeling happy, closer to feeling better because you're using the resources that you have. You're not feeling frustrated. You're not feeling stuck. And that in turn can actually increase your confidence. But it is a mindset tip. And I would take it with you in so many different areas. If you can just start small, start in one area. You can use the example I gave you. How can I increase my health over the summer and in turn that will help you feel a little bit more confident as well and focus on just adding electrolytes in what can you add in that you have around you that you can bring into your life that will make you feel better and in turn be more confident in this world so that was number one number two on the list is to choose to make habits that are sustainable that you can keep all year round it's almost like keeping a promise to yourself again going into the idea of like summer fads, summer diets. A lot of people during the year will branch out a certain amount of time where they're going to say, I'm going to do X, Y, Z and do it extremely kind of like the black and white thinking I was just talking about. And then after that time period, they, it's hard for them to continue that goal or you're prone to to behavior, whether it be giving up completely, pushing it aside, doing the opposite. Because again, you're restricting yourself. A lot of suffering that we cause ourselves comes from us restricting in some way. So using this time to build habits, think of habits as, if you've ever read the four agreements, um, think of it as like an agreement to yourself. Think of it like a contract you're making with yourself. Like when you keep your word to yourself, you in turn boost your confidence. Because if you always say you're going to do something and then you quote unquote fail or don't achieve that, then you're Your confidence goes down. Your trust in yourself goes down because you're setting yourself up pretty. I don't want to say setting yourself up for failure when you do those types of short term goals, but you're just putting yourself in a hard position. You know, it's like saying that you're going to start waking up at 5 a.m. when it's something you've never done before and you work nights like it's something that you can choose a habit that's going to be more sustainable or a promise to yourself that you can actually keep. And in turn, you're building that trust with yourself. And you're showing up for yourself. You're telling yourself, like, I am this type of person and this is something that I do. And then it makes you confident in that. This also kind of reminds me of what I'm saying. Um, The book Atomic Habits, one of his tips for making habits stick, condensed, basically my vernacular, he says that when you identify with something, so you identify as a morning person or you do these things it adds to your identity and your ego like eats it up so your ego is like yeah I'm a person that gets up and goes to the gym like so that type of mentality like improves your confidence in a way you should read the book (laughs) because I did like a partially okay job explaining that I really paraphrased it but what I meant was like the part of your brain the ego side of it that likes to attach itself to identities it loves to identify as some somebody that does x and when you keep a promise to yourself and you're able to do something which again don't feel bad if you're not able to do those big goals you set because sometimes we put ourselves in a really compromised position if you can just go back revisit maybe the goals that you felt like you couldn't achieve and break them down into really small actionable steps I can do a whole podcast episode on building habits and like how to get them to stick a little bit 
I believe my first episode gives some advice in that if you want to check it out. But the book Atomic Habits is really good as well. But if you break it down into those little actionable things and you reevaluate or re go through those goals right now, then you're going to be able to actually get them done and not feel that shame. You know, confidence and shame. If you want to get into chakras real quick, get a little metaphysical here. Um, the solar plexus chakra, when it's unhealed, you feel shame. And the op- opposite of that is an adjective would be confidence. So when you feel shame, when you feel like you can't do things or you haven't been able to do them, or like you're a kid and you show up to shoot a basketball in gym class and you miss it, you're going to identify yourself as somebody who can't play basketball and you're going to feel shame over that. But again, if you can set yourself up for very small actionable steps in different areas of your life and you can hold your word, it could be something really small. For me, I get more confident when I tell myself I'm going to read one page of a book a night and I actually show up and do it because sometimes it's hard for me (laughs) to get through a few pages. But if I tell myself, I'm going to read one page and then I show up and do it. It's like a tick on the confidence list. You know, you're slowly moving up. So try starting small. I know sometimes people don't want to hear that. They just want to jump to the big things, but reevaluating things that you want to do, starting small, maybe getting that book Atomic Habits because I think it's great. And then keeping your word with those things, it will boost your confidence in the long run. And it'll also make you happy in so many different ways. Number three, we're going to get a little bit more into the nitty gritty of confidence. So take a second and think about how you talk about yourself, whether it be to other people, when you're making comments to yourself when you're in the kitchen and you drop something and you call yourself an idiot, or if you like to make jokes about yourself and you use a lot of self-deprecating humor. When we talk bad about ourselves in any way, our mind internalizes that. And like I said earlier, the first step to everything is just becoming aware. So before you can even take like big steps on it, just notice how you talk about yourself during the week. And if you find yourself talking negatively about yourself to other people, or if you just do it in private or you make jokes about it, changing that behavior is going to help make you more confident. So upgrading the words that we say about ourselves or about things that we like and enjoy I would suggest the first thing to do is start to journal or maybe just take a few minutes to journal about what qualities you enjoy in yourself. If you can really pin down kind of stream of consciousness, set a timer for five minutes, put the quote prompt down. What do I enjoy about myself? What do I like about myself? And it can be like a, literally like something that like a five year old would do in kindergarten where you're just like, I like my hair, like the color of my nails today, whatever. It could be physical. Then you can go into like, I like that I'm kind to people. I like that I care. I like that I wait for people to be done with stuff. I don't leave them hanging. You know, you start to get deeper into it. So the more that you do stream of consciousness writing, the more things you can find that you love about yourself. And then maybe you can find one thing to focus on for that week. And you could write it and you can keep it pinned up on your mirror. You can do so many different things with that one quote, or you can just journal on it every day or just keep it in the back of your mind. And then almost like reinforcing a dog when they're learning something, whenever you catch yourself slipping into a negative thought about yourself, you can just immediately follow it up with, but I'm kind to others. You know, something like that over time helps train your brain a little bit. If you find yourself in the cycle of shitting on yourself a lot. Another example of that is, let's say you're going out somewhere and you're breaking out, you know, because for me, that makes me very I feel unconfident when I'm breaking out. And sometimes I really focus on it. And it's like all I'm thinking about when I'm out. And if those thoughts are getting in your head, maybe take a moment to just start listing in your head almost gratitude. I just I feel like gratitude meditations are in general just turning to what you have, getting out of that lack mindset, getting out of I don't have this, which in that situation, I guess would be clear skin. So I'm focusing on the fact that my skin isn't clear. Right. So in the moment, I can just start focusing on other things. I can say, I'm excited for this. I have this. Um, Just get excited about the things that you like and enjoy. And you almost become like a hype person for yourself for a minute. If you can spend like a minute doing a cheerleading sesh, Being like, I literally am going to this awesome event. I get to see all of my friends. My hair is looking really good. I got this new eyeliner. I love the color of my pants. I love the color of my nails. This is looking good. I got my eyelashes done. Whatever you can do to counteract the feeling that you have, it will bring your mood up and then you'll start to forget that that's what you're concentrating on. So that's another way you can use it, either journaling it out or just in person if you need like a moment to go to the bathroom and just hype yourself up for a minute or if you're driving you can like say it out loud say it in your head it really does help anything that I say is corny on this show try it out there's a reason I'm saying it 
Because if it was really corny and it didn't work, I wouldn't share it because I'm not corny, okay? So if it's corny and I'm sharing it, it has some sort of positive impact, I promise you. Or else I wouldn't be wasting breath. Our next tip, I love this one. This is a real good one. I, I This is something I implement all the time and I've noticed a big change in myself because of this but taking pride in what makes you comfortable and what you enjoy so whether that be clothes uh skincare makeup accessories things like that I I guess I used to be embarrassed of wearing the style that I like to wear especially where I lived because it wasn't too popular at the time and again this was all my mindset maybe it was I don't know this is what I used to think so when I was like 20 and I would like I love like the 70s revival style and it really wasn't in at that time. I know it's like the shit right now, but it wasn't in then. And I used to wear like flare pants and I used to secretly think like all this judgment or I used to wear like bright yellow eyeshadow and like most people were doing like smoky eyes. So I felt like weird and I felt like that made me secretly um, confident. Like even if I did, like I pushed myself to wear it sometimes, but I would always be thinking about it when I was out. I was like, oh my God, like I really have like clown makeup on right now. (laughs) Or I just would notice like, I don't know, like wearing like skinny jeans, like made my figure look better, but I wasn't as comfortable in them. And I would like force myself to wear them, even though I wasn't comfortable in it, but just taking pride in what makes you comfortable and wearing what you like, looking into things that you enjoy, you know? So like, I literally love dressing like a grandma at a farmer's market, like a big tote bag. I live for a big tote bag, flowy pants, covering my water bottle and like stickers or like wearing bright colors and like funky jewelry like I I don't even want like if I got a wedding ring or engaged like I don't even want a fancy ring because that's something that doesn't like appeal to me like I don't like gold jewelry I like jewelry that looks like a six-year-old made it but I've embraced it you know I used to hate it I used to be like oh I don't look you know I look poor like I would have all these crazy mindset things in my head about what fashion I like to wear and then I just started coming into my own and being like it's literally my life like sometimes I I think I mentioned this in another podcast as well but one mindset thing I do all the time is I try to like jump to the future and let's say (laughs) let's say I died um and I'm like begging whoever up there to like let me back down for like one more day. I'm like, please, 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 like let me back, let me back. And then he's like, oh, whatever, okay. And he like flicks me back down to earth and I like, boom, I like land. I would want to be my most expressive self. I would want to do the things that I want to do. I'd love to go talk to the people that I thought I lost forever, you know? So just embodying myself when I can living in the fullest most authentic version like I just got flung back down to earth is something I like to think about because I'm like if I just got flung back down to earth I literally want to give a rat's ass if I was wearing skinny jeans like I would want to wear the stuff that makes me happy or the colors I love or hang out with the people I love or do the things I want to do so sometimes I like to switch into that mindset and it just gets me really excited about everything (laughs) from like minute details to like giant life events so switching into that mindset helps me a lot maybe journal on it or maybe just think about are there things that people have like tried to shame you about it doesn't have to be clothes and stuff I've like I found myself giving disclaimers all the time so maybe if there's something that you find yourself giving disclaimers to other people so I used to always wear like I love I have blonde hair so my eyebrows are really thin and I always like fill them in and that's just something I've done and I feel confident when my eyebrows are shaped and I shouldn't have to explain it and then I also like to wear concealer because I have a lot of discoloration on my face rosacea and eczema shout out to you too but so when I went to the gym I used to wear makeup and then I would like notice that other people weren't make wearing makeup and it would like they had better skin than me and it used to make me ashamed when I was like in high school and then sometimes I felt more confident when I had like I don't know just like I was ashamed of wearing makeup to the gym is like what I'm trying to get at because of other people's comments and things like that I don't think anyone ever actually said anything to me but I always secretly felt like a shame but it was in my own mind But just coming into your mind and thinking about things that you associate with shame. Is there anything that you enjoy that you quote unquote think is shameful? So for me, it was wearing a lot of makeup because for some reason people walk around and they're like, oh, when a girl wears a lot of makeup like this and this. And I was like internalizing it and I would be putting disclaimers on things like I'd be like, oh, I'm just going to go put like a little makeup on. Like I noticed myself downplaying stuff and I was like, F it. Like if I like to wear makeup, it doesn't matter. First of all, like I can give you a reason right now, but I won't because I'm so used to putting disclaimers on it, you know, 
spent my whole life being like, oh yeah, I'm just putting like a little bit of concealer on. Meanwhile, I had like foundation on, but like I tried to downplay it because quote unquote, wearing foundation was wrong. Like I wanted to be perceived as like a natural beauty. Like, I don't know what I was thinking, but I used to have such a shame around wearing makeup and now I don't care. I literally, I feel so good because another thing I do is like at the moment I like tint my eyebrows because they're really blonde. So I'll walk around with the eyebrow tint on and I like when I, um, it's like working in Hawaii, like I live in a community with people. So like I would put the eyebrow tint on and then I would go and do work on my computer and I'd be walking around the kitchen and to community kitchen so other people can come in and I'd be walking around and I have like these fake eyebrows on and I, sometimes I would dot like fake freckles on my nose with the dye. And I just stopped caring. I feel like if it was me four years ago, I would have literally wanted to vomit that somebody would like see me. I'd be like, oh my God, I'm so exposed. They know I'm not a natural beauty. But it took time and like all these mindset techniques I'm talking about to be like, F it. I don't care. You know, like I'm going to enjoy what I enjoy. Like I enjoy posting pictures on Instagram and I enjoy like, I mean, I don't know. That was a weird example, but that was something that came up in a conversation with my friend Kate we were talking about like sometimes we feel like we can only post certain things or whatever and I was like it's my page it's I'm just gonna post what I want on it at this point because I used to filter myself I used to try to make myself feel small in all these areas and then I just got sick of it I'm like this is my life if I just got flung back down to earth this is what I would do (laughs) I wouldn't hide I wouldn't like cower I wouldn't like try to like not let people know what I'm doing I would just embrace truly what I like and what I enjoy. If I want to post a million pictures in a row, I will. There's literally no rules. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I used to make all these rules in my own mind about stuff. So finding what you feel shame about. Maybe taking a few moments. That can be a journaling prompt, like writing down what you feel shameful about. Then looking through it and being like, hey, I actually enjoy number one (laughs) and number four and number five. And trying to focus on not feeling shame around those things. Just being comfortable in what you enjoy, you know? Take pride in it. Maybe there's things that you don't know that you enjoy but you've thought about like there's topics or an area or a sport or a style that you just haven't explored because you feel shame around it so maybe find out if that's something that you're interested in and kind of go into that that will boost your confidence like I've never been more confident in what I wear and what what I enjoy and the fact that I like wear all these like I don't know makeup and all that stuff like I don't care (laughs) I enjoy it and I'm confident with or without it but it's just like what I enjoy. Why would I not do what I enjoy? So that's where I am now. I had to give you that whole story because like I said, maybe like three years ago, like I wouldn't even, I would like, I wouldn't even, I'd be like, why are you telling people this? You know, why are you giving away your insecurity? Stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. So whatever you feel shame around. Okay. Next tip builds on top of that a little bit and take it with a grain of salt. This isn't something that I would say always matters because sometimes they're good but not always asking other people for opinions on things so if you have an outfit like and you cut you know in your heart always I feel like whenever you ask people for opinions on things you always kind of know what you want to do try to lean into that feeling a bit more or just play with that or take it with you but let's say you have two outfits that you want to wear sometimes it's cool to get a second pair of eyes on things that's what I mean by take it by a grain of salt sometimes it's cool to ask somebody their opinion on something before you make a big decision but ultimately always following your heart with things or what you desire the most is what's going to make you happier so sometimes I would like ask somebody I'm like oh which one of these do I wear and they would literally like tell me and then I'd be like I don't want to wear that one (laughs) you know like why did I ask that person that opinion or if someone's opinion deters you like I had somebody the other day trying on clothes and they were like oh this person didn't like outfit number one so now I'm like looking for all these other outfits and I was like but did you like outfit number one like that was going to be her go-to thing and she was like yeah but this person said it made me look x y and z and I'm like okay but like did you enjoy it like it wasn't like it wasn't like it didn't fit her nicely or it was something where you'd be a good friend and be like, actually don't wear that because that's colors like not good on you or whatever. But it was just like, if it's in your heart, you want to wear it, wear it. If you want to do something, just go for it. Like if it's a style of art or music that you like, just share it. You don't have to always ask other people if it's okay. Sometimes the opinion thing comes from that. We want to fit in. So we ask another person, oh, is this choice? Is this something that I enjoy? Is it okay? Like, does it does it bother you does it affect you when it's something that you should be enjoying no matter what it comes from part of our like hive mindset like our mindset when we used to live in tribes and if we did something that the other people in the tribe didn't like 
it, they could boot us out and then we would have to be fighting for survival, you know? So it's a survival instinct. We want to fit in. We want to be able to like appease others. It can come down to like a weird form of people pleasing too. If you find that you have people pleasing tendencies, which usually come from wanting to fit in and it's survival based, a lot of root chakra stuff, it could come from that. And check with yourself to see if you if you're asking people a lot of the times if your style of expression your this and that i see myself do it all the time i'm with friends a lot too girls get ready for this one um when you take like instagram photos and you're asking somebody if you look better in one two or three and you're like is two good is three good like usually there's one of them that you're leaning towards the most because you enjoy it again having an opinion somebody else like bring something up to you can always help i'm not saying opinions are the devil but most of the time you always know you know it can come from a people pleasing thing you just want to fit in you're like hey is which one of these is like the best so just checking in with yourself there knowing that you don't always have to ask other people if it's okay to do something and my last point is one of my favorites like because it really ties everything in that we've been talking about together the root issue to all of this, to feeling quote unquote unconfident or feeling like you're lacking something is because we're looking outside of ourselves to feel complete. And this can carry into so many other alleyways in our life besides just confidence. It's basing our worth, our happiness, our joy on something that is unattainable, something that is outside of us, something that we constantly have to find, fetch, search for, make a journey for, and that that's when we'll be happy. So that's a common problem that you'll see a lot in humanity is placing that sense of love, joy, happiness, enlightenment. It's something that you're searching for. It's something that you have to find, thinking that it's not already a part of you, that it's a separate entity. You'll hear it in different scenarios when somebody says, oh, when I have the money, I'll do this. Or when I have this type of clothing or my body looks a certain way, when I can wear these type of jeans, when my partner does this, when I have a husband, when I do this and that, then I'll be able to X, Y, Z. So looking for that answer and looking to feel a certain way, to feel a certain emotion again, whether it be happiness, joy or success, when it's derived from something outside of you will never be the answer. It's pretty much just a hunt that you're going to go on for life if you think that way. You need to reframe your mindset to finding that feeling of completion within yourself. Living this way will help with so many things outside of just confidence and body image. Again, you have to remember that it's not just like snap oh okay you're right I'm gonna (laughs) I'm gonna go on from this and be happy it's a work in progress you have to do some of that self-work you have to dive in you have to live in the moment and get out of that lack mindset by focusing on things that you're great grateful for or tuning into some gratitude practices you know playing up with what you already have and digging into what you enjoy you know exploring things that maybe you never let yourself enjoy doing these types of things will lead you to fulfilling fulfilled in what you have and again it's not wrong to have goals or strive for something but if you don't appreciate what you have now like I said at the beginning of this episode you're just living in that state of lack you know you're making yourself feel quote unquote unconfident because of this and I know how uncomfortable it can be because again I slip in there from time to time but take it from me when you put the time in to do self work your life is always going to be better you know you're always going to be on a journey but that journey will be much more satisfying you'll take in more abundance because you'll just notice what was already here it's a weird game of just kind of like unfogging a mirror like letting the fog dissipate around you and seeing what you already have seeing that you already have the resources to do what you want so maybe you're not in a place you want to be in but by hating the place you're in now it's not going to help you get to that new place you know noticing what you have now like if you're on a deserted islands what are the resources that you have here what are the things that you have that you can take advantage of whether it's in yourself whether it's on the land around you to get you to that new spot so just really tuning into that it's getting out of black when you realize that abundance that appreciation for yourself and the world around you it's going to boost your confidence it's going to do things beyond boost your confidence it's just going to bring up your total life satisfaction so maybe a little journal prompt about that last section is to notice where you look for the joy outside of yourself. Where do you look for that validation from others? Where do you look from that validation of I need this and that? Ask how you can give it to yourself or just first get the list of where you look for it. And then secondly, you can dive in and be like, how can I give it to myself? How can I find that appreciation right here? How can I use the resources around me to achieve what I want, but also enjoy the process? 
So I'm going to leave you with that to think about for the end of this episode. It's just so interesting how it all ties together. These are points that I've just noticed over the years and it just clicks and makes sense for me now. But it wasn't like this in the beginning. Like I said, everything's a work in progress. But this week, again, I will be dropping a solar plexus confidence meditation on the podcast this Thursday. So that will be the next episode up. If you're watching it after the week of July 19th, it'll already be the next episode in the pod. So you can click that next if you want to listen. But thank you so much for tuning in. As always, tag me, share the story on your Instagram. My Instagram is happy holistic hippie, hippie spelled H spelled the way that it is in the podcast. You you get it. But um, that's basically it from me. I do have a little announcement actually. Another um, page that I have is called happy hippie shops because Happy Hippie Shop was taken, so I had to put an S at the end of it. But I have an art shop where I make digital prints and t-shirts, and I'm dropping a jewelry line, which I'm so excited about. It's all handmade jewelry that I've been working on the past month, and I'm doing two different styles. So I'm doing an astrology-styled collection and then an ocean jungle collection that it's inspired by my travels in Hawaii. So I have those dropping this week. Um, it's necklaces. And then I also have some pretty t-shirts and sweatshirts that are like really summery. So be sure to follow that page. I'll link everything below. I'll link the Atomic Habits book that I was mentioning and I'll link both my Instagrams below if you want to check it out. And I'll be posting a little bit more about the jewelry launch there. It's like really cute affordable jewelry it's nothing crazy just check it out there because it's like my passion project and I'm really excited about it and we are talking about ways to improve your confidence and what better way to improve your confidence than getting a new funky necklace to wear so check it out I know you're dying to (laughs) but I will see you soon I have a new episode again coming each week Mondays and Thursdays we have a talk episode and then a meditation episode but as always I hope you have a blessed day and Okay, bye. I don't know what else to say.